So he'll open the door, close the door, make coffee, do this, do that, and it's like really loud. And the machine mm. goes like, mm. Yeah, it's like, mm. <laughs> Every morning, that's my alarm. <laughs> Hello, it's Hazel. Hey, it's Zizera. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Clarity's Hush Podcast. Wow. Today's episode, uh, I can't believe we've never spoke about this. I think we spoke about it in bits and pieces mm. over the other relationship episodes. But it's about living together oh. with a romantic partner. Okay, quick question for the floor. Mm. Have you ever lived with a partner before? Yes or no? Three, two, one. Yes. yes. Okay, so we all have that experience. Yeah. Be it like before marriage, Ooh. during marriage. <laughs> yeah, who are you? Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Define living together. Is it like the occasional stayovers, but like, you know, no. maybe many times in a week? Living together is you move in with a person, the person mm. move in with you, or you both move into a place together. So you mm. don't, that is your home. That okay, is your primary okay, okay. home. Ah. So still, yes, your answer, Hazy? Yeah. Who are? Who are? Yeah, what? Oh yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the answer is yes. Okay. For all three of us. Yep. I think a lot has changed in the last decade on mm. partners living together, right? Mm. And, and I think in the past, maybe our parents' generation. Oh my god, they would not have done that. It no was way. such a big taboo yeah. Yeah. to live together before marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm. Agree. I think it was more of a taboo for the girl than the boy, right? Because once you move in together with this guy before getting married and then people point the fingers at you. Mm. Last time, la, say, oh. hey, you, yeah. in Chinese, you say, you which means you, you're not like taking care of yourself. Oh, not demure, not mindful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah not, <laughs> not demure, cute, not mindful. Not, not thoughtful. Mm. Yeah, I think cohabiting, to me personally, is the key to a successful relationship. I'm really? 100% pro this. I'm so pro yeah. this. That's how I feel about living together with your partner and how much it affects the relationship. But you may feel different and that's okay. That's yeah. what we're here to discuss. Yes. Uh, tell me more. Why do you think is the key to a successful relationship? Actually, I've cohabited with every single one of my partners. Mm. There is a caveat to that. I think for some of my partners, I was probably too young to have cohabited with them. Okay. And I probably should not have. Fair. Mm. Much to the chagrin of my parents. Mm. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm older now. But at a certain point, I think especially if you're thinking, okay, this partner might be my lifetime commitment. Mm. I might want to marry this person. Mm. Or I might just want to, you know, be with this person for the rest of my life. Yeah. That is when you think, okay, cohabiting, it's as important as sex. To mm. me, intimacy. Well, sex is important. Sex is important. Communication is important. But so is cohabiting. But I'm going to stand on the other side of the field and say that sometimes, right, when you stay together, that romantic bubble just bursts. But you know, eventually, you're going to have to do that also. I know. So some people might want to prolong that mm. feeling of like, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Right. You know what I mean? Right. If you don't stay together, you always look forward to seeing each other the next time, the coming weekend, go about your movie dates, whatever. That is mm. one of the problems uh, mm-hmm. in one of my relationships okay. that we became roommates. Like you uh, stopped courting each other. Yeah, you kind of mm. just get so comfortable you became roommates. But I do think that is something that is a choice. You have to keep having the intention of this is a romantic relationship. This yeah. is not a roommateship. Keep trying at that every day and yeah. keep that in mind. Okay, so how different is it in your current relationship? How do you keep yourselves from turning to, like what you said, roommates? roommates? Well, the key thing is you have to share responsibilities in the household, mm. but still keep that romantic spark alive, right? Mm. So have intentional things like date nights outside of the house. Mm. Oh. Go for a date night once every two weeks, once a month, whatever mm. works for you. To just remind yourself, hey, we're a couple. Uh, we're not like, you know. Yeah. Well, but actually, yeah. date night once every two weeks or once a month is very long. Eh? Very long? Yeah. Huh? Like, no, mate. It's very hard to find time oh. <laughs> to it's true, do it sometimes. True. Yeah, mm-hmm. to go out. But don't you feel like when you have the right person, even like non-intentional, intentional dates feel like a date. Yeah, like even cooking together at home. Or grocery shopping. Grocery mm. shopping Aww. together, mm. going furniture you shopping. I, and I, I actually have good knife skills. <laughs> I'm good at prepping. Oh! With those nails? Are you yeah. kidding me or not? Anything with fire, <laughs> keep me away. But I'm good at prepping. I'm good at the starting part. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm good at eating. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. finishing part. The finishing <laughs> part, yeah. But, okay, so Hazy, you mm. don't think it's important to live with your partner before marriage? I okay, question. Mm. Uh. Mm-hmm. So you've had relationships where 
you don't live with the person, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've also had one that you lived with the person. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest difference? Like what I mentioned, the romantic spark, that bubble, that fairy tale sort of like facade just disappears when you stay together too long. But a new kind of romance develops. I agree. Mm. I agree. You know? But mm. it's a different kind of romance, you know. Like what Zero mentioned, you stop chasing each other, mm. but you are very comfortable with each other, which is not a bad thing. You, you, you start doing household chores Correct. together instead of, you know, going on cafe dates together. That kind of difference. Nothing wrong, but it just depends on you know, what you're seeking in this relationship. But if you're looking at marriage, mm -hmm. it's also still going to happen. Correct. It's still going to come in time. You just want to hold it out a little bit. Yeah. To some people, it might be like that. And I think the biggest thing about staying together with your partner is that you might actually see a different side of yourself mm. that is not the good side. But I think that's important, mm, right? Because if you never see yeah. the full picture of your partner, yeah. and then you get married, mm. yeah. and then you move in together, and then Surprise! you see it, then that's but too late, right? In this case, I'm not saying like the full picture of my partner. I'm saying the full picture of myself. Oh. Like when I stay with someone, I mm. actually become like that. I become so comfortable with this person mm. that maybe sometimes I accidentally show him the uglier side of me. Like what? That like you fart? No, like sometimes <laughs> when I get frustrated at like work, oh, okay. I get angry and you know, it's not what a side that I want to show my partner. But the same way you want to see everything mm. yeah, before you commit, they should also be able to see everything. You think so? I think it's important. Oh. Because regardless, if you show it now or you show it later, mm. it will, it come, will out. come out. You still have to deal with it. You still have to deal with it. And mm. I think some of the reasons why people choose to, I guess, cohabitate with mm -hmm. their partner mm. before marriage, we'll talk about, okay, like, you know, in some cultures, how it's not acceptable mm. later on, right? But those who are okay with it and your parents are okay with it, one of the biggest reasons is to test your compatibility. Okay. Mm. Right? If you're only seeing each other once or twice a week outside on dates, mm. it's very hard to know if you are truly 100% compatible. Very true. Yeah. And the thing is, even if you see each other a lot over a long period of time, I think there are certain things that only comes out at home. That yeah, only true. if you live with that person, mm. you'll see or you'll learn or you sort of like learn how to navigate around, you know? Mm. So I have two friends. I, I love them dearly. They are a couple. They chose to stay together because of financial reasons. Mm. They can share the rent, you know, they can split groceries, split mm. bills, everything. Mm. And my friend, she's grown to see how reliable of a person that mm. man is. Aww. He cooks for her, mm. he, he, he washes things for her. Like even simple things like an apple. The boyfriend will ask, hey, you want to eat apple or not? My friend would be like, uh, you slice that, I eat lah. And then you really slice apple for her. Oh. Like, it's very tiny things, but very sweet It's la. very, very sweet. So, I know someone, right, whose uh, parents believe that you should cohabitate before you get married. Mm. The parents believe. Wow. Believe. wow. Yeah, okay. Very progressive, yeah. very good. I like, I like. Mm. So, they're looking at marriage in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, the parents said, we're not trying to chase you out. But before you get married, get out of the house. Mm. Go rent. Because you're going to run your own household mm. when you get married. Yeah. So now you go run your own household, figure out your financial situation. If you're going to fight, fight now. Because... After you get married, it's too late lah, basically. Mm. Correct. Basically, mm. you know, I think things like groceries, mm. bills, like just when everything is under your management and control, right? I mm -hmm. think it changes things, you know? And mm. I agree. Because in the past, my partners cohabited with me under my mm. parents' roof and we didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Right. You know, everything is up to their care and we just live there. Mm. But now that I'm cohabiting with my partner, it's like, it's his place, right? So now it's our home. Mm. So everything, we have to take care of it, right? From like, if the bill goes out, we'd be like, okay, why... Why yeah. is that? He just told me the other day the electrical bill went up. I was like, oh shit, what have we been doing? Mm. It turns out it's because we have a new puppy now and, and so we have to turn on the aircon in a whole different room all night. Mm. So she's the reason for it. <laughs> Anyways, things like that. Yeah. Being independent and financially independent in your own home is so much different than mm. cohabiting under your parents' roof. Mm. Mm. Agree. Emotional readiness is also one thing. I think some couples want to take their relationship to the next level and like strengthen it. So one of the better ways or one of the good ways to go about doing it is moving up. Mm. And then like see how you can handle your emotions when it's just you and your partner without the involvement of any family members. That's true. Mm. I mean, it is, it's the choice between, okay, we've lived together and it doesn't work, let's break up. Yeah. Or we got married already, mm. now we have to get a divorce. Mm. Mm. Which is, you know, a complicated, whole, yeah. right? Yeah, it's complicated. And I think a lot of people move in together Sometimes because they're not sure if they want to get married mm. yet. Mm. So they live together first and maybe delay marriage a little bit. Yep. Or they want to 
like I said, avoid having to get a divorce because mm. they haven't seen the full picture. Yeah. But at the same time, I can also understand why some people, they refuse to move in together before getting married. Mm. Of course, there's a lot of like social stigma, especially yeah. for females. Yes. And in a traditional... Would you think Singapore is a traditional country like in terms of these values? I think certain cultures. I think slightly conservative still. Mm -hmm. Because in the US, parents expect their kids to move out at yeah. 18. Yeah. Be, be it with a partner or without a partner. Correct. But no one in Singapore expects that. Firstly, because it's damn expensive. Mm. Yeah. And also, I think parents are a bit more like... Protective. You know, yeah, I want, I'm I, always, I want the kids with them. Yeah, I'm always my mother's little baby. Eh? Yeah. When I mm. first wanted to move out, she was like, huh, why? Mm. For yeah. what? You'll be out, ma, which means is it necessary? Mm. I think religion is another big thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, which is Very why true. in some cultures, it's completely taboo. Taboo, right? Unthinkable. All. Yeah, because living together before marriage, to some people, it implies that the couple is intimate. And in mm. some cultures, that is not acceptable. Mm. Oh. So I think with it comes a lot of stigma. Mm. I think also one thing that people maybe would not choose to live with their partners because you have different living habits. Mm. Maybe one is a super morning person, mm. one is a super night owl, and mm. then they just want to like stay up all night and then yeah. you disturb the other person. It's so different. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you have to work through. So I work the night shift mm. and my partner is a morning person. Mm. I would love to be a morning person, but I can't because I work the night shift. Mm. So there are a lot of things like when he wakes up in the morning, because he's so independent, right? He doesn't think that through no bad intention, but he doesn't realise that I'm still trying to sleep. So he'll open the door, close the door, make coffee, do this, do that, and it's like really loud. And the machine goes like, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. every morning, that's my alarm. <laughs> so I had to had a, have a com conversation with him like a few months ago after we started living together. I was like, babe, I need to sleep. <laughs> I, I like, I'm still asleep. Can you just try, like, in a very nice way? You have to communicate. You can't be like, why are you so fucking nice? No, you have to be like, can you please, you know, just be a bit quieter. Try to and tone it down. Sometimes yeah, they're not down. aware. Yeah, they're yeah. not aware. It's not, mm. there's no malicious intent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to his credit, he really, really tried. He opened the door so quietly <laughs> now. I close it so quietly. If our puppy is making noise, you can get her and make sure that, yeah, they don't like, yeah, they don't like uh, disturb me. Yeah, I had the same conversation with my mother. Huh? She likes to open the door like, bang, bang, and then take the thing oh. there very loudly. Then? The next morning, bang, bang, <laughs> dong, dong, dong. Oh my God. A no, and different. it's not just, okay, you know, I mean, don't look at partners, right? Yeah. Just look at your own household, your own family. Everyone has their own like little self. Yeah. That sometimes drives you fucking nuts. Mm. Yeah. My biggest, let me tell you, my biggest thing, right, is if I find things in my butter. I'm sorry? <laughs> what? Your what butter? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you use butter, right? Okay. Yeah. Everyone uses that butter, right? Sure. Spreadable butter. Mm. You know when someone uses like a, like they already use something? A dirty knife. Correct! And they put it in the butter and the like yeah. crumbs are there, for example. I Bread cannot. Crumbs. Sometimes peanut butter goes into yes! the butter. Yes! That must be the weirdest pet peeve That's ever. Weirdest shit. It drives me nuts. So if I open the fucking butter and yeah. I see these things, it drives me crazy. I have a very simple solution for you. Buy my own butter. Buy your own butter. <laughs> Label it Azura's butter, do yeah. not touch. And buy your own knife. Label it Azura's yeah. knife, do not touch. Do not touch. This is my butter and my butter only. Very simple solution <laughs> to save you a lot of grief. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horror story right there, okay? But what's some of the <laughs> other horror stories that we've read online about moving in together, okay? So, this one's from Reddit. Okay. And this person says, We've, We were dating for a year mm -hmm. before moving in together. Mm -hmm. And I thought I knew him in and out because, you know, we spend so much time together. Yep. Despite not living together, we were always around each other and moving in just didn't seem like it was such a big deal. Mm. Upon moving in, we found out that we both are very different. He didn't think that he would have to cook or clean or basically do anything. He assumed that it was my, the girl's job. <gasps> Ooh, shame then on you. you. Eat, then yeah. you don't deserve a clean house. Before oh, I moved in, I thought he was a minimalist because he like didn't really have anything around his apartment. But turns out it's because it's easy for him to manage because he doesn't like to clean, cook, organize, okay. anything like that. Another thing that would really annoy me is that I have a dog. And he would always leave the gate open, which is very dangerous. Dog could run out, get run over mm. by a car, all that. Mm. I told him to be extra careful and he didn't seem to care at all. I got tired of being his mom mm. and very soon after we broke up, once the lease ended. Mm. So living together before marriage, even though I encountered many unpleasant surprises and it led to the end of the relationship, mm. without it, I wouldn't have known until it was too oh. late. See? A blessing in disguise. So mm, it's basically. better to find out first, mm. don't you think so? I think so. Okay, mm. I've got another horror story, but before that, Hazy, okay. because you said, right, that you think 
I said, you're not really for living together, correct? I would say you I would like weigh carefully the, yeah, the pros and cons. So yeah. would you do it again? Yes. Mm. As much as I think, uh, you know, I want to extend the romantic relationship, the mm. romantic side of things, ultimately it's still a very practical decision to move in together. And I mm. feel like with the right steps taken, you can still enhance that romantic relationship, even while staying together. So how would you do it differently or better this time? First of all, manage my own emotions better. Explain it like why I'm feeling this way. Mm. Secondly, be more conscious. I feel like sometimes you need to put effort to mm. like have a little cook night together, sit down, eat together, or mm. just like have a glass of beer and like, you know, look at the view. Simple things like that, very simple things, but can make a world of a difference. Yeah. Mm. So right, I've got a friend. She lives by herself. The guy lives by himself. They were not together at this point. Mm. Um, this was covid and they don't live in Singapore, so it was locked down, right? And you can't go out. And I think because it's Malaysia, so it's like rather far apart. Okay. Okay. Um, one day he decided to confess his love. Mm. But you <laughs> But you can't go out. Yeah. So the only way is if you're exercising. Okay. So he cycled all the way to her house. Like four hours, I think. Wow. Professed his love and then moved in right away. Huh? Wow. <laughs> Just him and his bicycle. <laughs> And they've lived together since. <laughs> so it's like literally from day one. Wow. It's okay. In Singapore, the furthest you can cycle is like... Hey, very to far. Pasaris okay. to Jurong. Jukun. Yeah. Jukun to Pasaris. Far lah. Very, very far, very far. Very far. Good for them. I mean, that's oh. a success mm. story. It's very interesting. It's not a horror story. I have a question for Hazy. Because now you own your own place. Mm -hmm. So if you were to have a partner that you would want to cohabitate with, would you want to rent a new place? with your partner or have your partner cohabitate with you in your existing place? The first option is not even something I would consider. Okay. Mm. Why would I rent a new place? So that you still have your own space. Oh, I know a few friends okay. who, who like that. They still keep their own space mm. then they cohabitate with their partner in, mm. a, in a shared space. I would prefer making new memories together in like a space I call mine. Mm. I think this makes it more meaningful. But mm. I see where you're coming from. I never thought like that could be an option. Then if yeah. it doesn't work, then how? Burn the house. No lah, then Kick he, him he out. move out. <laughs> and I continue Kick staying him out, no, and be happy every day. He's like that one. Yeah. yeah. So I know we've said a couple of horror stories, but your friend's story is a success. It's yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah. It's very sweet eh? I think it's jackpot, like one yeah. in a million. Yeah. To cycle over there and then move in. <laughs> so let's read you some success stories from okay. Reddit. This story says, from Singapore, yeah? Ooh. Cohabited for five years before getting married. Mm. Well, five years That's your flat can MOP, time. you can tell really? already. It's a long time. Eh? After washing the dishes, he leaves a soapy sponge to dry, which irks me. Mm. Pet peeve of mine. My hair drops everywhere on the floor, which irks him. Mm. Okay. After using the toilet, he doesn't turn off the lights, mm. which irks me. Mm. Oh. And it slightly irritates me. I wash my face in the basin and mix the floor wet. He doesn't like it. Mm. Sounds like, eh, this is a horror story, right? But they communicated. They were mature enough to take the feedback and change their habits. Now, he squeezes the soap out of the sponges before he leaves the kitchen. Hey. I sweep my hair off the floor once a week. As you should. He installed a motion sensor in the toilet so that the light oh, was turned off. It's smart, eh? I now wash my face in the bathroom area instead of the basin and we're very happy together. <laughs> so you see, like, you... When you see these kind of things, you can like iron it out slowly. Mm. You can make compromises. But, yes, but it takes two hands to clap. Yes, Some people yes. don't want to make changes, you know? Some people just feel like, why? I, I'm happy living the way I am. Correct. Then it won't work out, what? So sometimes, right, I think beyond little things, sometimes it also has to do like with ourselves, uh -huh. right? Like, okay, let me give you an example. I'm not a morning person. I fucking hate the morning. We okay? can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Very obvious. I'm <laughs> grumpy in the morning. Mm -mm. When you're by yourself, it doesn't matter, right? But I think sometimes we forget. So there has been an instance where I woke up in the morning and I was grumpy as fuck. But then like, it's unfair for the other person. Mm. You know, and you wouldn't realise or discover or learn until like, you go through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. You show a side of yourself that yeah. you're not proud to show yeah. and that person doesn't deserve it. No, it's not about whether they deserve it. It's about can they love you through it or not. Mm. It's like, just this morning, my partner, he had a very late night. He came home from a work dinner at midnight mm. and then he had a 7.30 a.m. call. So he had to wake up at like 6.30 and he was super grumpy. But I already knew from last night, I knew he's going to be grumpy in the morning. So I prepared myself for the grumpiness uh -huh. and 
gave him a lot more TLC. I was like, oh, like, you know, treat him oh. like a baby. Like, oh, like, you're very grumpy. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> oh. uh, it's okay. Tomorrow's Saturday. It's the weekend. Oh. Yeah, things like that. Mm. It's like you have to Sayang love him. them through. Mm. Yeah, love them through yeah. the grumpiness. So it's okay that you're grumpy okay, in the morning. Okay, so if that happens yeah. once in a while, that's okay. Sure. But if that happens every day, then I don't think it's oh. like, you know, the partner's responsibility to keep like Sayang right. the, the other half. personality disorder. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he a therapist? <laughs> Have you girls heard of this term, the cohabitation effect? It kind of scares me, you know. Like you term. morph into one person or what? No, cohabitation effect is you're more likely, according to research, okay. if you cohabitate before marriage, the success rate of your relationship goes down. Why? Uh? The cohabitation effect, because when you live together, you find out more things that could potentially ruin your relationship or mm. cause you to break up or get divorced mm. or whatever. Sorry. Repeat the statistics. The 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 statistic says yes. The statistic says that yes. if you live together before marriage or before engagement, uh huh, you're more likely to okay. You, you tend to be less satisfied. You tend to be less satisfied mm -hmm. with your marriage and more likely that the marriage might not succeed or it might not happen lah. Yeah, it might not happen lah. Then couples who do not live together before marriage, but in my defense, no. But the comparison then yeah. would be the breakup rate to the divorce rate. Yeah. Don't you think so? Yeah, it's true. It's just happening earlier. Yeah. Whether you're grieving a breakup or grieving a divorce. Correct. No, that's why I say it scares me to hear the statistic, but it makes sense because the more you find out about, about the person, yeah. the more chance there is that it might not work out. Right? It's true. But then it's like on. a test yeah. drive before you buy a car, you know? Do you actually test drive before you buy a car? Of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you talking about? You test drive first and then you don't like, you don't buy. Like. What are you talking about? Okay, okay. Fair, not, fair, not, fair. Not, not so bad, what? no man. Either way, when it comes to moving in with your significant other, there's a lot to think about before you just move in on a whim. Yeah, of okay? course. I mean, your friend cycling all the way to the house, yes. moving in, that was a lucky... So, I don't that think, is one in a million. I don't eh. think he thought he was going to move in. Oh, oh, I think he thought he was just going to go there. No, so she offered to like, oh yeah, his no, love. He must have been too tired to cycle four hours back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, stay here for the night. And then one night became two, became one week and then like forever. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that you should consider and discuss before you decide to move in. Mm. It is a commitment. It is yeah. a big step. Firstly, you need to be very open and communicate about each other's quirks mm. and habits and pet peeves, mm. right? Don't just take it in, take it in, take it in. It's okay, I'll just take it in. After a few years, you will explode. Not even a few years sometimes. So you must be really open with your emotions. And I think sharing responsibilities, equal responsibilities mm. is very important. I'm not saying you have to do like 50% of the dishes, 50% of the laundry. Yeah. But if one person does the dishes, then the other person maybe can vacuum the floor, yeah. mop the floor. Or if these chores really get to you, then my solution is chip in money get a part-time helper. Mm, true. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If it outsource. Yeah, correct. If it salvages a relationship, why not spend a little money? Moving in together also means sharing the financial exactly. burden. You have to discuss how you're going to share expenses. Is it split down the middle or mm. is it like, okay, this week I get groceries, next week you get it, or I'll pay for this one thing, you pay for this other thing. We don't have to 50-50, mm. but we both have to put in equal effort because it's very unlikely that you and your partner make the same amount of money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Someone's always gonna pull a bit more of the weight and that's okay. That yeah. happens in most mm. marriages. Mm. Yeah. The one thing though, I would try to advise, if it's possible for you within your budget, within whatever place that you're renting or buying or wherever you're staying with your partner, I think it's very important to have two bathrooms. Carry on. I think it's very mm. important for the relationship to do your business separately. Nobody asks you to do it at the same time. You can, can take no, no, but it's different. Like, Having your own bathroom, it, it, it's almost like having your own personal space. Like, okay. this is my space. My makeup, my skincare, my toothbrush, my everything. This is my space only. Then they, he has his space. The, is that happening for you right yeah, now? Yeah, because his shit is really messy. So <laughs> I cannot take it. Every time I go in there, I pack, right? The next day, it's messy again. So my stuff is very organized. And this is my space. I do my makeup here. It's like my therapy session. Aww. And I think it's very important. Because even even though you can you can say take turns, right? Sometimes you're rushing out of the house. Right. You know, one person's brushing the teeth, one person's in the shower, and then you're bumping butts in the bathroom. Mm. It's just not as sexy as you think it is. Well, I once had a girlfriend who, um, because her partner was using the toilet, they only have one toilet in their house, so uh, she couldn't use it, right? So she had to go downstairs to the... They stay in a condo, like to the <gasps> public toilet downstairs, oh. do her business, and then leave for work from oh, okay. there. 
Yeah, so it's At like a, you have a along the way that. kind of thing. Right, yeah, she right, had that right. all planned out, lah. Right. Oh, yeah, but interesting. A bit inconvenient that I agree. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some tips and advice before we leave you to cohabitate with your partner. Mm. <laughs> have a very thorough and proper discussion about why you want to live together, mm. and you know, what kind of living habits. Yeah. Can you adapt to each other? Yeah, and- just make sure your intentions are aligned. Your goals are aligned. And always remember, conflicts are normal. Oh, yeah. You need a very open channel of communication. Mm. Mm. That's right. Maybe you can start small. So don't just like move in right away. Start by... I think this is what happened with me also. Like I was saying like one night a week, then two nights, three nights, four nights, five nights, six mm. nights. Okay, I'm moving. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, it was gradual. Mm. Like, and my stuff also started moving very gradually. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, like but a easy slow percent. takeover. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I think it's important to respect each other's boundaries. Mm. Like we mentioned, cultural differences, religious differences. Yeah. Mm. So many differences that you have to iron out, sit down and, you know, just set that boundaries for yourself and for your partner. Absolutely. Well, you're a team at the end of the day. It's not you versus each other. It's you versus the world. Correct. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. not fighting each other. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. We wish you all the very best. Yeah. yeah. And if you are cohabiting with your partner, if you have any comments or thoughts you want to tell us, we'd be most happy to listen to them. Follow us on Instagram at isclarity.co. That's right. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, me listen, turn on your notifications. And we're on YouTube as well. And yeah, wish you a very happy home. Yeah. Woo! See you next See time. Bye bye. Bye. Because like in the US, right? Mm. Sorry, can I sneeze? <coughs> nice. You. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the first alarm goes off. They straight away sit up, get out, kind. Well, I cannot. Eh. Babe, I've been there. Yeah. It's like that. Then how? Then shut your fucking alarm. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, no wonder you break out already. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes.